Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and all our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of a command, and with the archangel's call and the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him at to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, who creates, redeems, and sanctifies. Joy to the world! The Lord is come! Yes, I'm aware that it's not quite Christmas yet, even though one of the local radio stations has been playing Christmas hymns since, I think, August. It's actually not even Advent. So the question is, why is Mother Lori quoting a Christmas hymn 
It's actually because I'm quoting Psalm 98, which was the basis for our sustaining member drive this year, together for joy. Psalm 98 was the inspiration for Isaac Watts, who wrote the hymn that we all know as Joy to the World. It's a psalm that announces the coming of God into the world and all the marvelous things that God's presence of love and caring and compassion bring us. The psalm invites humanity to join with all of creation as we shout for joy to the Lord. All the earth burst into jubilant song with music. Let the sea resound in everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands let the mountains sing together for joy. Let us all sing before the Lord. The psalm reminds us that the presence of God among us, indeed, Emmanuel, God with us, is so astonishing that the only thing we can do is come together for joy in God. But I will be honest. 2020 is not a year that makes me want to sing for joy with the mountains and clap my hands with the rivers. Because of coronavirus, we have not been able to sing with each other or pray together in this holy space of St. Michael's or even sit across from each other for coffee and discuss SEC football or Cats basketball. Being together for joy has been mostly via Zoom meetings or staying eight to 10 feet apart while we wear masks and we wave to each other. Being together in 2020 has also meant facing again in this country the destructive legacy of racism and privilege and hate. It's meant talking about the crushing burden that that racism has put on our fellow citizens, our fellow children of God, who are black, brown, and of color. And we have also again heard the call from them and from God to those of us who are white to do our work, to recognize our own prejudices and do the hard, necessary labor to dismantle systemic racism so justice can indeed flow down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And add to all that, a presidential election year that has revealed again just how diverse our country is and the hard reality that diversity can also mean divisiveness because it is difficult to be one out of many. It has been a decade of a year. And I wonder in the midst of this, is this joy? But was it joy 2,000 years ago when, in a very, very small village, chafing under Roman occupation and rule, Jesus was born? Was it joy when the Jewish people living lives filled with hardships and disappointments, and yes, even joy, prayed for someone to come fix it all, a Messiah, a Savior, and then they discover it's this guy Jesus? Was it joy when they realized the savior of the world was not going to be a political leader sitting in the halls of power and something that is necessary for us to remember this day too, but an itinerant rabbi who ate with outcasts and talked theology with scandalous women and whose salvation came not through conquering armies, but through his own death on the cross. And was it joy when the women fearfully wandered into a graveyard very early Easter morning and encountered an empty tomb? Here's the thing. Yes, it was, and it is. When we encounter God in the unexpected, we encounter joy. 
Joy is not synonymous with happiness. Happy is from a root that means fortunate and advantageous and greatly pleased. Tacos make me happy, but they don't necessarily make me joyful. Joy is something more substantial and lasting. It has its roots in the Latin word gaudete, rejoice. Rejoice, it is what we hear on Row Sunday in Advent, since I'm moving around liturgical seasons of the sermon, joy in one of my favorite definitions from a monk in the 16th century says, joy is a noble source of gladness and gratitude. This noble source of gladness and gratitude, this joy is the thing that bakes into our bones and it is the holy thing that supports us when we feel wobbly and shaky. Joy hears the singing of angels on dark nights when we are afraid and reminds us that fear is okay because joy is with us. Joy helps us find a new way when the old paths are not available to us anymore. Joy calls us to hope and thankfulness beyond ourselves. St. Michael's brings me joy. It brings all of us joy. So what I can tell you is I may not want to sing with joy this year, but because of God and you all, I have. We have. We are together for joy in all sorts of creative ways and new ways and ways we never thought we would be together for joy as a community. We are together for joy as we worship online together, as we gather in small groups via Zoom and in person, as we celebrate 65 years of St. Michael's in a park. We are together for joy as we light the candles for our loved ones who have died in the memory garden. And we pray for them as we gather online. We are together for joy as we reach out in love to help those who are lonely and hungry and in need. We are together for joy. We are together for joy because we are St. Michael's. This is who we are and who we will continue to be and become because we are following God together. And what joy teaches me is that the church is made for times just like this, not necessarily times of ease and tranquility, but times of difficulty and struggle. Not only a nice walk in sunny weather, but a pilgrimage through the valley of the shadow of death. And joy is not a whimper or a whisper of silence. It is a new song, sung out loud, even in the time of pandemic. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. So this year, your vestry and I have chosen together for joy is our theme for stewardship to remind ourselves that we as St. Michael's know how to be together in this noble source of gladness and glad gratitude and love. We are together in welcome and hope even in the midst of a global pandemic. Over the next few weeks through December, we'll have posts on social media and I will invite you to share your reasons for joy at St. Michael's. Before Thanksgiving, you'll receive a letter from a best member asking your household to pledge to our community of St. Michael's as we continue our ministry of joy. And here's the thing. We realize it's been a year. So if you can pledge, that is joy. If you can increase your pledge, that is joy. If you need to decrease your pledge, that's joy. And if you need to hold back because it feels really uncertain and scary, joy is there too because we and joy are in this together as a community. All of our gifts work together however we can offer them. So starting Monday, the offering plate will be on the altar if you would like to place your pledge in it in person. 
I will tell you thank you to members of St. Michael's without even waiting for the stewardship drive to happen, have already done that. You can also mail it in or fill it out online. The letter will give you options for several ways you can submit your sustaining member gift this year. And then at Christmas, a time when we need to remember a joy to the world when we proclaim the birth of God into a world that was fearful and scary and overwhelmed, we will celebrate the gifts that we offer God for the work of love in the world. This is why all of us as a community ask each other to share our treasure and invest in our mission as St. Michael's so we can do the work of love in our community in this city of Lexington, in this state, and even throughout the country and the world. In a time of difficulty and despair for so many, St. Michael's is a community of welcome and hope. In a time of injustice and struggle, we proclaim love and work for justice and peace. In a time of silence and isolation, St. Michael's is and can continue to be a community of new ways of being God's church, of being in relationship with each other and with God, and being together for joy. So yes, even in 2020, we will sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. And the Lord is here among us showing us love and joy together. Amen. Let's continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all, all that, that is seen, seen and unseen, unseen. We believe, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose in accordance with the, accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our Bishop Mark for our presiding Bishop Michael, and for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, 
the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Mary and all who have died in the coronavirus pandemic. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for this nation as we seek healing, justice, and peace. For all those in the medical field treating those who are sick, and for all essential workers. I ask your thanksgiving for all veterans and those who have served our country. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son and his coming in glorious majesty through Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace, everyone at home. Good morning. Welcome all as we worship together for joy, which is the theme of our sustaining member drive, also known as stewardship campaign, which campaign is sort of giving us all PTSD at the moment. So um, (laughs) over the next few weeks, you will receive a letter from a member of the vestry asking you and your household to prayerfully consider how you might be able to financially support the mission and ministry of St. Michael's uh, this year. And uh, we also are very aware that in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, that people's financial situations may have changed. They may be in a much different place than they were this time in the last year. And what we want you to know is that your church understands that and we are in this together. So however you can contribute financially, we appreciate that. And more importantly, we appreciate you contributing with your prayers and your presence and your gifts that are not financial. Although I can tell you the treasurer right now is saying things as he watches the video. So, and speaking of, he will preach next Sunday. So he will be here for his take on Together for Joy. And also, I'd like to speak briefly to the rising coronavirus rates, not only in Lexington and Fayette County, but in the state of Kentucky and quite honestly, all over the nation. We are abiding by our bishop's request and also the governor's request that we essentially cease all what I would call non-essential activities in the church for two weeks. Please wear a mask. Please practice social distancing. Please make sure that when you do go out and are in crowds like shopping that you are doing it for necessity. Um, It is an astonishing thing to think that if we continue on the rates that we are on in this country, in December, January, and February, we could be looking at thousands of deaths a day. 
I do not want us to be in that place. We do not need to pray for that many people who have died. I want everyone who is here in this country to be able to celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas, not only for this year, but for the years to come. So please, please take this virus seriously. We have had clergy and lay people in the Episcopal Church in our diocese diagnosed with it. With it. We've had some who have died. So this is in home, in family, in our city, in our state, and in our country. Please wear a mask. Please take this seriously so that this time next year we can be physically together for joy. We also celebrate the birthdays and anniversaries of our members and friends, especially the birthdays of Pat Mann and Alan Rinker and the wedding anniversary of Drs. Chris and Laurie Doty. So happy birthday and happy anniversary. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and sustainer of all life, bless, preserve, and guide your children as they mark another year of life in you. Make their hearts ready to receive your love and free to love others. Grant them grace to grow into the fullness of Christ. Strengthen them, give them joy, and awaken them every day to the power of your saving help through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And as our Savior Christ has taught us to pray, our Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.